Let us pray. Father, again, we want to thank you for today that we can come together to worship you and as a family in this church. And especially as we now prepare our hearts to listen to your word, we pray that your word's preach shall not return void. It shall penetrate our inner beings and touches our life and that it shall accomplish the purposes of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters in Christ. The gospel reading this morning, actually talking about the vine, um, is a reminder. We've been reading this, I think, many times, uh, uh, do our devotion upon it and things like that. But it's a, it is a reminder to you and to me about what it means to be a believer, um, to remain in Jesus Christ. And of course, um, our theme is the key to fruitful living. Uh, it is talking about how we can be fruitful as a believer. Uh, three things I want to share with you uh, this morning. Uh, number one is submission to Christ. Um, the, fruit to, fruit, the, the key to fruitful living is, of course, abiding in Christ, is submitting to Christ. Number two, abiding in Christ or remaining in Christ. And the third one is to bear much fruit, uh, to glorify our God. So these are the three points that I want to share with you uh, this morning. Submitting to Christ, abiding in Christ, and glorifying Christ through bearing much fruit. Jesus wants us to be fruitful and impacting others. Um, if you go to our vision school in Mile 8, Sipugad, Sipugad, yeah, you'll find that um, the, the vision and the mission there is um, either Sanakan or Tawau is exists to impact. Uh, we are teaching children uh, so that in their future life, they can impact others, impact the community. And likewise, we in the church should also be um, adopting such kind of attitude to exist, to impact. Uh, we don't want to live, no one is in island, that's the saying. No one is in island. We don't want to live isolated from one another. I think we are a social being, a social creature. Some of us are extrovert. You know? we, we cannot live alone. Uh, we need people to, to make us thrive in life. Of course, some of us are introvert. Um, uh, we like to be alone. We don't, we don't want to be in social life with other people. And some of us are one extreme to the other. Some of us are in between. You know? So if Jesus says, be fruitful, uh, some of us perhaps on the line of being introvert, perhaps may think that is not for me. But that is the whole point, you see. As, as a believer, um, although we have different characteristics, uh, different strengths and weaknesses, but at the end of it, we are to be fruitful. So how should we be fruitful? That is what we are trying to uh, say here today. What is the purpose of this symbolism of uh, Jesus saying, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Um, and uh, he says, um, if, if, uh, if the branch that is in me that doesn't bear fruit, he said, my father will cut it off from me. Uh, but the branch that bears fruit, uh, Jesus said, the father will prune it so that it will bear much more fruit. So what, what does that mean? So let us look at these three things that I want to share with you this morning. The first one is submitting to Jesus Christ. Submit to Jesus. There's no way, no two way about it. We are believers in Christ. Uh, we believe in Jesus Christ. So we submit to him. We, we surrender to him. 
uh, a person cannot be saying to one person, I am your follower, and yet not submit to that person whom he follows, isn't it? Um, a person cannot say to his follower, you follow me, but don't, don't submit to my, my command. There's no way like that. It's always a follower, leader, relationship. It's always like that. So Jesus said here, I am the true vine. Uh, you know, in the Bible, um, the vine is, is the symbolism for the Israelites. The Bible talks about Israelites as the vine. And, and, and this vine, the Israelites, is a, to symbolize their relationship with God and what God expects them to be. Uh, you know, of course, when we read the Bible, we know that this metaphor of the vine is very strong in the, in the minds of the Israelites. And if, if they don't uh, bring their life at the expectation of God, then God will punish them, isn't it? Um, they are, these Israelites are called stiff-necked people. You know? Stiff-necked because they are divine, but they don't submit to God. Um, so in, we find that in Exodus, where, where Exodus chapter, chapter 32, where um, the Israelites were rebelling against God. And then God says to Moses uh, something like this. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff-necked people. The characterization that God gives to these people, these Israelites who are in, on their way to the promised land, they rebel against God. God says to Moses, these are stiff-necked people. But these stiff-necked people are divine. Um, so Jesus is saying to them, you are the vine, I am the vine, but I am the true vine. Look at me, I am the true vine. You must do something like what I do. I am the true vine. If you want to know what the true vine is, look at me. If you, are, if you think that you are the vine of God, you are the vineyard of God, you should also display your character like the true vine. And you don't know what is a true vine? It is me. Uh, I am the true vine, Jesus said. But if any of the branch that is in me doesn't bear fruit, it will be cut off. Um, so, meaning what? Submitting to uh, Jesus. I am the true vine. You must submit to me. If you don't, then you are like a withered branch. You are like a dead branch. What will happen to a dead branch? Certainly, it will be cut off, Jesus said. So it's a reminder to us as believers in Christ. Maybe our talents are different. Maybe our giftings are different. Our strengths and weaknesses are not the same. But at least we have something in our, in our life. We bear fruit, you see. So this, uh, this vine that Jesus is talking about is actually talking to the people there right there at that time. We are the vine. But if you don't know what a vine should be, look at me. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Any, everything that is in me. And that is why sometimes in our discipleship program, what, will, what, we say, what do we say? Be like Jesus. Or be more like Jesus. Of course, we cannot be God, but be more, be more like Jesus. Christ-like life. Uh, that can only happen if we submit to Jesus Christ. Certainly, we don't want to be called stiff-necked people, meaning rebellious. We don't want to be rebellious against God. We want to be fruitful. Uh, we want to impact others. Uh, we want to bear fruits. But sometimes there are things that don't allow us to bear fruit, isn't it? Um, so Jesus said, this is the solution. 
you don't bear fruit because you are that type of branch that has died. Um, so you are separated from the stem, separated from the tree, separated from the trunk. Um, but the good news is that Jesus has the power to make us alive, isn't it? So maybe it is not so much that part of our bodies will be cut off. It's not that kind of thing. It may be that some of our lifestyle perhaps have to change as if the pruning comes. And that is the trial that we go through, isn't it? The trials in life are something like pruning our life. Trials in itself sometimes feel very painful, but it is the pathway to blessings. Um, trials in our life, sometimes it's those things that we don't, we don't like it, but we don't want it to go off. Um, and we need the power of Jesus Christ to do that. Talking about pruning, Jesus said, I am the true vine. Every branch that in me that is died is cut off. Talking about pruning, how does pruning take place in our life? It can be painful. It can be very comforting. Yeah. But let, let me uh, list a few. Pruning can come um, when we are convicted of our sins. You know, the Lord convicted us of something that is wrong and we repent of that sin. That is pruning. So sometimes in your prayers, sometimes in your reading the Bible, you come to a certain passage of the Bible where it talks about you. It talks about me. It reminds me of something. And I repented of that sin. So Bishop Melter and myself were in a mission school uh, in our primary education. And one day, I was more senior to him. He was not there yet in my group. One day, we went out from the hostel to some way in the orchard that belongs to someone else. So we were walking through. Uh, we, people asked us, where, where are you going? As, as we are going picnic. We are going picnic. So we went, few of us. And then on our way to the picnic site, we saw a pineapple, ripe one pineapple. So being children, you know, in, in Kuala Sapi, I know some of you here originally from Kuala Sapi, you know the story maybe. Don't tell others, just here. So we pick up this pineapple, and the owner said, I know where you are. I know who you are. Stand up, stand out. We didn't. We hid ourselves. Um, but then the Sunday came and then we went to the shop. And he said, ah, you are the one. I knew you were the one, he said. Yes, sorry, uncle, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So each time I remember that incident, I, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. I was convicted of that uh, is it sin or is it a mistake? I don't know. I want to call it a mistake. Um, it's a sin, isn't it? Um, but if you're convicted of that type of, that type of wrongdoing, it is the pruning process. Nobody has to tell you. The Bible will tell you. Yeah. And when trials come and challenges come, God, God allows that to happen to you. And you come out stronger. When trials and challenges come to you, you question, where is God? But then God allows it to happen in our lives. The end product is our faith is strengthened. That is also pruning. So it's, it's not bad. It's something like the word discipline, isn't it? Some of us don't like the word discipline. It sounds very harsh, very negative in you know, a discipline. Yeah? But in fact, discipline is good. It comes from the word disciple, isn't it? 
I disciple you. I, I bring you up. You know, I carry you under my wings kind of thing. So discipline is good. But some, some of us don't like the word discipline because it sounds very harsh and very, very deep and very painful. I'm talking about correction. I'm talking about discipline. Just as a loving father as you are, just as a loving mother as you are, you discipline your children for the better side of it. You know, Your children may not like it, but when they grow up, they will appreciate it. And they will do the same thing what you did to them when they were children. Isn't it? If we know that is true in our life, if we know that that happens in our life, if we, if we know that the intentions of such correction and discipline is good, if we know it, then we appreciate it. And, and later on, we actually do the same thing to our own children. If we know that is true, that is also true of God. And that is the kind of pruning that Jesus is talking about. The rest are like teaching and instruction. Of course, it's good teaching, you know, instruct you and uh, makes you a person who is accountable for what you are doing. So all this, I call it pruning. When we submit to Jesus, he also helps us to grow. And we can only grow when obstacles are resolved. We can only grow when our problems are solved. We can only grow when we are humble enough to bring ourselves to repentance. And that is the whole process, the whole line of process of pruning. We, you and I, are branches that uh, who are attached to Jesus Christ, the true vine. So let us strive to produce fruits for Christ. As long as we are attached to the vine, Jesus said, you will produce fruit. In fact, much fruit. So let us allow God to purify our lives, if it is true. Pruning, it is through pruning. If it is through gentle rebuke, it is through gentle rebuke. But whatever it is, we appreciate if it is meant for us to grow spiritually in Christ. Remember, the key point is abiding, remaining in Christ. And for that, we have to submit to Christ and also to his pruning. Number two, in verse four to five, Jesus said, remain in me. If I also remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the true vine. You are the branches. He re repeat again. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. So the second principle is to remain, to abide, to remain. And not just to abide, to remain, but also to follow, isn't it? to imitate what Jesus is all about. When we are in a situation where we seek justice because somebody perhaps has done wrong to us, what should we do? How should we respond to people who acted negatively to us? And sometimes we, a lot of ways we can respond, isn't it? But there's one phrase that can help us. Uh, what would you do? Uh, how does phrase go? What would Jesus do? Yeah. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? WWGDA. If something, someone uh, insulted you or something, someone you know, uh, hurt you, and you want to take action against that person? You ask the question, what would Jesus do? Um, and I think that opens up the whole spectrum of uh, the whole idea of how our responses should be. If we remain in Christ, Jesus said, you will bear much fruits. 
And if we bear much fruits, we become channels of blessings. So coming back, coming back to that question, if someone hurt you, what would you do? What would Jesus do? And you will know the whole range of Jesus' um, responses to people who, who um, hurt him. But coming back to this verse, if the fruit that is in you is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, then you know certainly how you should be um, responding. What does the fruit of the Holy Spirit say? It says, the ninth fruit, yeah? it says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mind you, there are nine of them. You know? um, so if someone hurt us who remain in Christ, but someone hurt us, we abide in Christ, but someone hurt us, what should we do? Um, if we are in Christ and remain in Christ, we bear much fruit. So the fruit that is in us should be one of these nine uh, fruit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, um, let us think about it together. You know. um, the main point here is that we must abide in Christ, remain in Christ. Follow Christ. Abiding means following his footsteps. Abiding means imitating what Jesus would do. Abiding means that we live in him, not according to our own ways, but we lean on the ways of the Lord. So let us deepen our relationship with Christ. Let us get connected and stay connected with the true vine. Let us obey his words, for his words is sharper than two-edged sword, you know, able to separate between the, the truth and the false. Um, that is the power of the word of God. Philippians 4.3 says, I can do all things in him who gives me strength. So let us remain forever dependent upon Jesus. And pruning away the hindrances is one of those Painful, but blessful, full of blessing pathway to God. The third one. The importance of remaining in Christ is to bear fruit. And Jesus said, if we bear fruit, whatever you ask, you will receive. And if you bear that much fruit, God will be glorified. So what can we learn from this? There's a, um, a word, ask, isn't it? Um, and this word, ask, A-S-K, represents three verbs, three actions. Ask, seek, knock. Jesus said, if you remain in me, was ask whatever you want, and it shall be given you. So in other uh, verses, it says, ask in your get it. Seek, you'll find it. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Here, Jesus said, if you remain in me, ask whatever you want, and it shall be given unto you. So this, this is the first thing that we should uh, learn if we want to know the key to fruitful living. Ask. Jesus said, ask for whatever you wish, you will receive it. I'm sure some of you are trying to understand uh, the practical meaning of this verse. Because I have been asking for so long, I haven't got it yet. I have been seeking for years and I haven't found it. I've been knocking doors and I haven't got anything yet. And you begin to dispute what Jesus said, you know. But this is the challenge for us that we continue to ask, we continue to seek, we continue to knock. Why? Because Jesus promised, if you abide in me, ask and it shall be given unto you. And then we shall ask for everything that we want and we shall also ask 
for everything that we need. Um, so there, there's two words I use there, want and need. We ask for everything that we want and we ask everything that we need. Which one do you think should be the most um, nice thing to ask God for everything we want or for everything we need? I think for everything we need, God will give it to us. But for everything that we want, may not get anything from it. So let us differentiate between want and need. Although Jesus said here, ask, yeah, and you'll get it. But we must understand also that there are a lot of asking, but God will not give it to us because it doesn't align with his will. Number two, glorifying God. Jesus said, if you bear much fruit, whatever fruit you have, you may have only one, no problem. If you are faithful in that one, God can give you more. Uh, if you are faithful in small things, God will give you responsibility over greater things. Um, sometimes as a human being, I want something greater, but God doesn't give it to me, so I should accept it. Because maybe that is not my calling. But I want to say that let us ask God for all things that we want to do to glorify God. God says, if you bear much fruit, you will be glorifying God. Our primary goal in bearing fruit seems to be the primary goal of bearing much fruit seems to be for Jesus in this verse is to glorify God. So if we have such giftings, if we have such talents, although it's small, although it's not known to many people, let us do it because we glorify God that way. So if you are, for example, a prayer a warrior, yeah, a prayer warrior, normally they don't go in front. They pray at the back scene. Nobody see you if you are, if you are, if you are, you are praying. You know. uh, you're not a popular person if you are a prayer um, warrior. But you glorify God, isn't it? Because the power of prayer can change things. Miracles can happen because you are praying. And you are glory, glorifying God in that way. People's life can change because someone prays. And that person whose life is changed may never know that you are the person praying for him or for her. And you are glorifying God that way. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us continue to commit ourselves to abide in Christ and bear fruit in life, in your life, so that God is glorified through your testimonies. I want to leave you with this one comment. Of all the fruits that we can think of, and I want you to think of one fruit that you can do. Of all those things that you can do, think of this one thing. Lasting and impacting. Each one of you bring a person to Christ and bring him to Jesus Christ. If we do that, that fruit is lasting. That person will grow spiritually because of you. Um, and even as we pray for our church to grow, you will be that gateway of people coming into our church. Because you do what God wants you to do. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have revealed to us your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to die for our sins. Though we are sinners, you died for us. And now that we are believers, we ask you, Lord, to continue to help us so that we remain in you, abide in you, and bear much fruit to glorify your name. May our life be a blessing, a channel of blessing,
impacting others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.